Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Morning Prayer for Friday, June the 17th, 2011. The scripture for this service, Psalm 88, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 21. And the Song of Zechariah, Luke 1, verse 68 to 79. And I'm glad you could join me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, my beloved God, I call for help by day. Alleluia, Psalm 88. My beloved God, I call for help by day. I cry at night before you. Let my prayer come into your presence. Turn your ear to my cry. For my soul is filled with evils. My life is on the brink of the grave. I am reckoned as one in the tomb. I have reached the end of my strength. Like one alone among the dead, like the slain lying in their graves, like those you remember no more, cut off as they are from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the tomb, in places that are dark in the depths. Your anger weighs down upon me. I am drowned beneath your waves. You've taken away my friends and made me hateful in their sight. Imprisoned, I cannot escape. My eyes are sunken with grief. To I call to you all the day long. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work your wonders for the dead? Will the shades stand and praise you? Will your love be told in the grave or your faithfulness among the dead? Will your wonders be known in the dark or your justice in the land of oblivion? As for me, I call to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Why do you reject me? Why do you hide your face? Wretched and close to death, from my youth I have borne your trials. I am numb. Your fury has swept down upon me. Your terrors have utterly destroyed me. They surround me all the day like a flood, and they assail me all together. Friend and neighbor you have taken away. My one companion is darkness. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, my beloved God, I call for help by day. Alleluia. The lesson is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now the boy, Samuel, was ministering to Yahweh under Eli. And the word of Yahweh was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of Yahweh, where the ark of God was. And then Yahweh called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And Yahweh called again, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know Yahweh, and the word of Yahweh had not yet been revealed to him. And Yahweh called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And then Eli perceived that Yahweh was calling the boy. And therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls to you, you shall say, Speak, Yahweh, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and lay down in his place. And now Yahweh came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And then Yahweh said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God. And he did not restrain them. 
Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of Yahweh. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that God told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. And so Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And then he said, It is Yahweh, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, Yahweh was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of Yahweh. And Yahweh continued to appear at Shiloh, for Yahweh revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of Yahweh. Here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions for the Holy Church of God, for Joe and Dan and Tom, and for all of our church leaders. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease. For peace in Jerusalem and in the whole world. For Barack, our president, and for all who are in positions of public trust. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right uses of the riches of creation. We remember the unemployed, especially Robert and James. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, especially Stephen Michael and Melody. For Don and Marjorie, who are recovering from surgery. For the aged and the infirm, especially Marjorie and Judith. For all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. For our enemies, for those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, our families, friends, and neighbors. For Raymond, Lloyd, Louise, Sarah, Howard, Billy, George, Lawrence, Stephen, Margaret, Dwight, Dan, Joanne, Hugh, Charles, Tom, Wayne, Martin, Kevin, Philip, David, Ramon, Ivan, Joseph, Benedict, Miriam, Suzanne, Walter, Arthur, Robert, Patrick, Stephen, Edward, and John, William, David. And for all who've died in the communion of your church, for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may, have, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. For the mercy of God community, that God who has begun this ministry may bring it to fulfillment. For the intentions of all who have asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved in heaven, holy your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of Israel. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of Israel. You've come to your people and set us free. You've raised for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to Abraham and Sarah, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give the people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal.
eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of Israel. Alleluia. Bless Yahweh, my soul, and glory to God, whose power working through us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs>